Hello, my name is Roger, and today I want to present a guide for applying for the MEXT Undergraduate Scholarship. I want to give some tips for applying. Now, the MEXT Undergraduate Scholarship is a scholarship to go to Japan to study, and it's offered by the Japanese government. It's a really good deal. They pay for your school fees, they give you a monthly stipend, but it's not easy to get, and applying is difficult. Just last week, I heard from the embassy that I got into the scholarship, that I successfully applied for it. Um, and I just want to reflect about it and I want to offer people tips. When I was applying myself for the undergraduate application, I felt that there were some resources, some good resources like Nihon Jin Janai, but on the whole, there weren't enough resources out there. There weren't enough guides or tips um, out there and I hope to be able to do that for others. The main disclaimer though is that I'm not Max and I don't re represent Max in any way at all. So everything that I say is just my personal opinion about what I think I did right. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so let's get to the first stage of the application, which is the actual paper application that you have to physically print out and submit to the embassy. Now there's a lot to talk about it, um, and I think I'll start with the administrative side of it, the kind of details, the personal contact details, the details about your address, your parents, your family, and things like that, which are necessary. There's a lot to write, so those who don't really have an eye for administrative detail can get lost in it, so it's good to start early. It's really, really good to start early and just to be attentive to, to the demands of each question. Um, some more administrative tips. I actually hand wrote my application. When I submitted it to the embassy, they told me that that was not necessary, so I guess you don't have to if you don't want to. And also, in terms of the photo, they require a, a passport photo, and I decided actually to just digitally copy and digitally copy and paste a photo onto the application. I, I did that because I wanted to save the money, and I think if the rules still permit for the coming years, you guys should do that as well, because it really saves money. Now, let's get down to the real meat of the application. The real meat is the writing for the important parts. So they do ask a couple of questions, and I don't want to gloss over them. I actually want to talk about each of them in depth. Now I'm going to talk about what I wrote and what I think are some tips that can be gleaned out of what I wrote. Again, this is just my opinion. Before I get into that, I think I just want to say that um, this written application is very, very important because it's really important that you think through what you want to write about, not only for this stage, but it'll help in the interview later. I'll explain why later again. But, you know, let's get started. So first, um, we're going to get down to the majors, right? The majors, you have to choose, you have to rank your top three majors. And for me, I chose law as my first, political science as my second, and Japanese literature as my third. Uh, that makes me bunke, so I am applying for humanities and arts and humanities instead of science. Um, so I chose these because I felt confident about articulating my passion about these things, right? So, for example, for law, um, I was already in law school in my home country, so I felt I had a better chance to, to go on to do law with Max because of that. But not only that, I was really, really interested in law and how it was a framework of Japanese society, something new, something localized to Japan, and I was very, very excited to get into it. Um, I chose political science because I've always been interested in political theory, but more specifically, I think ever since Abe came into power, um, there's been a lot of change in Japan. I've just been very interested about that. So I was ready, very ready to talk about that. And then lastly, Japanese literature. Uh, I, I confess I don't really know very much about the Koten, like the old works, but um, I really like modern Japanese literature, so I read a lot of Murakami's books um, in the original Japanese, and I really enjoyed them. So again, I, I think I was very prepared to write about it, I was very prepared to talk about it, and I was very prepared to show genuine interest about what I was doing. I think that's really important, because if you're genuinely interested in what you're doing, it comes out in the way you write about it, and it comes out in your application. So, yeah, I really say go for that. Um, there is a separate question after that about what kind of academic interests I have. So that's quite related with the major question, right? It's quite related to the question of which major you're going to choose. Um, 
for that, I kind of just went ahead to talk about Japanese society and how I was very, very interested by Japanese society. How um, it has the omote, which is the surface, and then it has the ura, which is like the back of Japan, where Yakuza and the sex industry. So I talked a lot about that. Um, and again, I think it's good to show that you know, you know a lot about the country that you're going to. I think that's very, very, very important. Uh, some other essay questions I got was, um, why Japan, right? What, what makes Japan so interesting? What makes Japan so special? Um, this is, at the end of the day, a scholarship to go to Japan, right? So I think it's good to be very honest, but I think, yeah, the slant, the, the intention of writing the essay should be to write something good about Japan, right? Japan is good. Japan is great. That's why we want to go to Japan. And um, I wrote about how Japan is very gracious, and I really, really enjoyed that. So in my... Uh, in my elementary school days, I spent three years studying and growing up in Japan, in a public school in Japan. So I talked about that, and I talked about growing up in Japan, I talked about um, keigo as a language, um, and I thought that that was just amazing, and they were so gracious, so warm, and so welcoming, and that's what I really enjoyed about Japan. So I think, again, the tip here is to bring out something good about Japan, and in terms of why you want to go there. And then uh, lastly, there is a question about occupation, right? So for me, um, I think I was very honest to say that I wasn't so sure yet, but I just answered again honestly about how I wanted to be in academia, maybe work for NGOs or um, maybe work in law, work for an MNC, something like that. So I wrote about that, and I think there's nothing much to be said here other than, as I said, to be honest. Yep, so I think that's about it. Alright, so we're down to the second stage, which is the examination round. So if you pass the paper application round, you move on to the exams. And I think when it comes to the exams, all I can really say is practice, practice, practice. A lot of people really underestimate how important practicing is. And I know practicing can be difficult because there aren't enough resources out there. Uh, I see always, all the time on Facebook, people asking for links to the paper, and um, questions about where they can find the papers and everything. Um, I was pretty lucky because I found an archived website with, with um, the papers all the way up from 08 to 2011, and then you can find the papers from 2011 onwards in the JASO website. So um, all these websites are going to be in the description box down below, so please do check it out. You'll have about five to six years worth of papers to practice on. So please keep practicing, keep practicing, keep trying the questions. I'm going to talk about each of the subjects and how um, I practiced for them and how they turned out on the actual day. And then I'm going to talk about some of my theories about how important the exams are. So firstly, English. I'm not going to talk very much about this. Um, English is my first language. I didn't practice any papers because I thought that it wouldn't be too difficult. And as I guess on the day itself, it really wasn't that difficult. Um, and if English, if English is your first language, then I really don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, if it's not, try out the papers, keep working at it, it should be fine. Now for the second, um, for the second exam, it's math, right? So for math, math is split into Mathematics A and Mathematics B. Uh, mathematics A is for all the people in Bunke, or the Arts and Humanities, and Mathematics B is for all the people in Rike, which is Science and, and uh, Math, right? For me, I did Bunke, as you guys know, so I did Mathematics A. Mathematics A is simpler than Mathematics B. Um, it has basic calculus, basic algebra, basic trigo, and I thought it was quite alright, but it can be quite inconsistent, ranging from year to year. So some years, there was just some really strange, really difficult questions, um, and it's good to practice, as I said. I think I did a lot of practice, but on the actual day itself, when I actually did the Mathematics A paper, I thought it was incredibly difficult. I didn't know how to do so many questions, and for the most part, I... I, I didn't see all these questions come out in, in, the, practice, in the practice papers before, so I, I was quite nervous, and I pretty much couldn't do, do almost any question, I think, much to my embarrassment and much to my disappointment. Uh, yeah, so that, that wasn't a very good experience. Now I'm going to talk about the third paper, which is Japanese. Everybody has to do Japanese, and the Japanese paper is split into three parts, basic, intermediate, and then advanced, and everybody has to do it, but you can just not do whichever, whichever part you don't want to do, and it will be counted as zero marks. So, uh, and I know people who actually do that, but more on that later. So, 
Um, I think Japanese was pretty consistent for the most part. It's, it's the same, you know, basic starts out easy, it gets harder and harder and harder all the way to advanced. I reckon I'm about maybe N2 level in terms of my JL Japanese language proficiency level. So, yeah, um, I think that's about it. That's about it. So now, some theories about how the scores are, are calculated. Of course, this is just my opinion, but given that I really bombed math, absolutely, I didn't do well for it at all, I think that there is a minimum score, but the minimum score is contingent upon the sum of all your grades, meaning the sum of English, Japanese, and math together. I think that's actually what is important, because over Facebook, anecdotally, you hear a lot of instances where people actually say screw up math or screw up Japanese, but still manage to make it to the next round. So I think, yeah, that, that could be it. That maybe at the end of the day, my math was terrible, but my Japanese and my English pulled up those scores. And maybe if it was Rike, they would pay more attention to science, they would pay more attention to math over Japanese and English. I'm not very sure about that. But anyway, that's, that's what I think. So I did manage to pass that round and uh, move on to the third round. If you pass the exams, you move on to the interview. First things first, the interview is really, really formal. I had to wear working attire plus a tie. Nobody stipulates that you have to do that. It's just that I think it's a typical Japanese style interview. So it's good that you dress formally and prepare for a formal interview. Um, the interview itself was nothing out of the ordinary. Um, there were four panelists, two Japanese, two locals, all of them staffed with the embassy, I presume. Um, what was really interesting was that the local was actually a counselor that I had seen before. Um, I saw her to get advice. She's, a, she's a, an embassy counselor and I saw her to get advice for going to Japan to study abroad. So it was wonderful because she knew me personally, she knew my story and I think that helped my application. Um, the interview itself, as I said, was nothing out of the ordinary. Most of the questions were already asked in the paper application, so if you did your homework during the paper application, you would know what to say. Most importantly, you have to be confident in articulating yourself and what you say in the paper application. I think that's all I can say. Other tips are, um, I know a lot of people go to Japan because of anime and manga, and there's nothing wrong with that, I guess, but I think it's, it's good to avoid mentioning that because it makes it seem like you're very, very frivolous. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, the scholarship is a diplomatic scholarship, right? It's a scholarship that hopes to improve the relationship between Japan and your home country. And I think when they ask you questions about your future and what you want to do with your life, it's good that um, your intentions are in line with the intentions of the scholarship as well. I think that that would be very helpful. Also, anecdotes win all the time. So if you don't have anecdotes about your life and, and about your life story, make ones now. Make ones now so that you can talk about them during the interview. I think that's really, really important. Um, other than that, really, I didn't get any crazy questions, no trick questions. The, this was a very normal, ordinary interview. They asked me questions about uh, the extracurriculars I did, the clubs and activities I participated in in high school. They asked me about community service, which was quite interesting because it seemed like that was a very American college thing, but it seems like they did ask a lot about um, the kind of community service and volunteer work that I did, so I answered accordingly. So make sure you have some of these things to talk about. Um, yeah, and also they asked me about my time in army, so all the other things that I wrote about in my application. They will refer to it and they will ask you questions from there, so it's important to know what you write during stage one. I think that's about it for the interview. So yeah, that's about it. Basically, if you pass the interview, you get recommended by the embassy, and then you have to go through a medical checkup, and basically your application gets sent to Max, where they will assess you compared to all the other applicants internationally. And if you get selected, then you will hear back from the embassy again in December. So it's a pretty long wait between the interview and then the medical checkup, and then getting the final notification. And some people make it, some people don't make it. Um, but yeah, I think this is all I have to share, all the tips and app tips for the application that I have. I'm really, really keen on sharing more with anybody who's interested or any applicant. 
um, I'm willing to share more about my essays or any part about the application process if you're interested. So do drop me a message and um, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.